your model for radiobiology, the fraction of dead cells after a scalar radiation dose D increases as D increases. Intuitively, it is expected that the fraction of surviving cells after dose D decreases as D increases. The tissue effect E is defined in the linear model as alpha D, where alpha is the proportionality constant that characterizes the particular tissue. This model is very helpful when considering extensive systems. This is primarily due to the fact that the additive property under the linear model holds for the tissue effect and thus the probability distribution. This means that for sufficiently low doses of radiation, it is understood that the tissue effect of a single dose is the same when administered in two or more separate fractions. For example, 10 units of dose, the tissue effect will be the same as the cumulative tissue effect of two separate doses of 5 units each, or a dose of 2 and 8. Thus, the fraction of surviving cells will also be conserved regardless of the administering of dose fractions. Using Lagrange multipliers, we can attain the probability distribution for the linear model from first principles. We want to maximize the continuous Shannon entropy using constraints of completeness and of mean value existence. By taking the derivative with respect to p of e and setting that equal to zero, we can derive a form of the probability distribution and then use the constraints to find a particular solution. For the linear model, we have, as expected, an exponential probability distribution decaying with e. As a consequence, the fraction of surviving cells also decays with the tissue effect. While the linear model gives way to meaningful and standard radiobiologic calculations, at high enough doses of radiation, it is no longer sufficient enough to express the tissue effect as simply alpha D. A quadratic term needs to be added so that the tissue effect is now more accurately defined by the linear quadratic model. If we try to verify the same additive principle that is valid in the linear model, we run into some trouble. Because of the quadratic term, there is no longer an equality as the single composite radiation dose D1 plus D2 has an extra term 2 beta D1 D2. This implies that a greater fraction of cells is killed from a single high dose than the fraction killed from two separate lower doses. At this point, we have now entered the non-extensive regime, and we are unable to maximize the Shannon entropy for an accurate probability distribution. What is proposed to mollify this disturbance is the maximization of a seemingly more generalized entropy, known as the Tsalis entropy, or the Q entropy. With Q as the non-extensivity or Tsalis index, the entropy can characterize how non-extensive a system is. This entropy holds in the limit when Q approaches 1, at which point a system is considered fully extensive, something very familiar. Notice in the integral that the upper bound is replaced by a finite tissue effect omega, at which point all cells are killed. By using the same method of Lagrange multipliers, we are able to solve for a system of equations to find the particular omega and Lagrange multipliers aq and bq. As in the classical approach, with the maximization of the Shannon entropy, we are able to find a probability distribution solution. I admit, I got lost in the math here because it's too easy to lose track of your q-1s and 2-qs and q-2s and negative signs and whatnot. Here's a solve solution for the probability distribution. Just like the Sol's entropy, we want to make sure that this solution holds in the limit Q approaches 1. The simplest way to demonstrate this is to consider the value omega, which is found to be this expression. I use Mathematica to consider values of omega at Q values close to 1. I started with Q equals 0.9, and as I added 9s to my decimal value, the value omega increased and blew up as I approached 1.
This log plot of omega as a function of q demonstrates this limit approach as well. This is extremely comforting because it means that in the extensive case, it takes an infinite tissue effect and thus infinite dose for the probability of surviving cells to approach zero.